In this lesson, you are going to be taking expressions and writing them in their simplest form by combining like terms. So by the end of the, uh, end of the day, you should be able to write an equivalent expression in its simplest form by combining like terms. Go ahead and write that in your objective now. Press pause. For the do now, you are going to simplify the numerical expressions and explain in words the steps that you took. So you'll go ahead and do each numerical expression and then underneath the expression that you see on your uh, notes that you have problem one, two, three, and four, that's for you to take a moment and explain what you did first, next, and so on. Go ahead and do that now. For the first problem as you solved it, you should have came up with a value of 20. For the second problem, a value of 11. For the third problem, a value of 8. And for the fourth problem, a value of 3. You are going to be writing expressions um, just to kind of warm yourself up here on how this is all supposed to work. And we've done this before, uh, but not a whole lot with words. So what I'd like you to do is take a look at the first um, expression. Michael is three times older than Anthony. And I want you to think about what operation is going on in that statement. And then I want you to write an expression. And remember, an expression has to have uh, values, numbers, uh, some sort of operation, and perhaps maybe a variable if needed. If you can, try and write a second expression to also represent the situation. Go ahead and do that now. Okay, for this expression, there's a few key words in here. I'm going to go ahead and circle. It says Michael is, is always means where the equal sign goes. We see three times older than Anthony. And I'm going to underline Anthony only because we don't know Anthony's age. So we're going to call Anthony A. So when I see this, I have Michael. I'll call him M. Michael is three times. Times means to multiply. So I can write it three times older than Anthony. So whatever Anthony's age is, you'd multiply by three, that would be Michael's age. I can also write this with the repeated addition because I do know that an expression with multiplication is repeated addition. So I could write it a plus a plus a. And that would be writing two different expressions to represent this situation. In this next problem, you're going to find the perimeter of a rectangular room, and it, that can be found by adding up all of the sides. Write this as an expression in two ways. So take a look at the, what is happening in the problem and see if you can find at least one expression, if not two. Go ahead and do that now. This expression is talking about the perimeter, and so when I take a look at the perimeter, I'm going to underline it. Perimeter of a room can be found by adding up all of the sides. So I already see I'm going to be doing some sign of sort of adding. So when I take a look at a rectangle, the traits, the characteristics of a rectangle are that if this side is W, then this is W. If this is L, then this side is L. So if I have to add up all the sides, it would be L plus W plus L plus W. And that's what the perimeter would equal. So if I'm taking a look at this expression, I can combine some like things just like we learned in hands-on equations. This L and this L matches. How many L's do I have? I have two L's and I'm going to add to it two W's. This would be the second expression. Please write that in your notes now. Write two expressions to find the area of the square below. Remember, area is length times width. So go ahead and try and find two expressions to represent this area. Okay, so when I take a look at a square, I know this side is S, this side is S, and this side is S. And I already gave you the hint that area equals the length times the width. So in this case, the length is S and the width is S, so I'm multiplying them. So S times S is one expression for area. And then when I take a look at this and I go delve a little bit deeper, I know that um, two S's through multiplication means that I have a exponent. So I have S to the second power or S squared. I'll write that in your notes now going to be taking a look at how to combine like terms and the word term is a vocabulary word that we have had in the past. So we're going to apply it to a little word problem here. It says Roosevelt High School holds an academic challenge each year um, 
the, the local high school teams compete in four subject areas, math, English, history, and science. Students from each grade level have rated their strongest subjects. So if you can see um, in, at the blue podium was math, and the, they came up with 11 math, and the red podium is English, nine English, and the green podium is eight histories, and the purple podium is eight science. So you can see that um, math is the winner. <laughs> so um, when we look at this, we want to know how did they come up with that. And so they said students from different grades who chose the same subject are similar to like terms and expressions. So for example, three maths and one grade, five maths and another, two maths and another, one math and another. Those are like terms and I could add up all of that to get to 11 maths. So the terms and expression, if you remember, are separated by the plus or the minus signs. So, and we have had, we've talked about that before. So when I look at this, this is a uh, algebraic expression because I have variables. I have 7x plus 5 minus 3y plus 2x. And what we're going to do is we're going to be taking algebraic expressions like this and simplifying them, which means taking them down to where they're a little bit more manageable to read. And if you notice in here, we have uh, in blue, you have 7x and you have 2x. Those would be considered like terms. Notice they are still separated by the plus sign because it's 7x plus 2x. And 7 is a coefficient to x and 2 is a coefficient to x. So they do belong together. Those are what we call like terms. 5 is a constant. It is not a like term to 7x or 2x. And minus 3y is also a variable, but it has a y at the end, not an x. 3 is a coefficient to y. So when I take a look at this, we can group our like terms together, and they did this by color. And don't forget that exponents can also be considered uh, like terms, and so uh, and constants as well. So when I would combine this, it would become 9x minus 3y plus 5. So let's take a look. In the first example that you have on your notes, you have 14a minus 5a. And if you think in terms of hands-on equations, you have 14 a's or 14 pawns, and then you want to take away five pawns. Well, we can do that because they're all pawns. So when I take away, uh, I identify the like terms, the two a's, I can take them away and combine their coefficients, 14 minus 5 makes 9, which would be 9a. Go ahead and write that in your notes now. The next term, 7y plus 8 minus 3y plus minus 1 plus y, excuse me, that was an expression, not a term, is separated by terms uh, by the plus and minus signs. So each one, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms there. And what I have to do is I have to identify the like terms. So I have to identify the things that can go together. And I see a lot of variable y's, so I'm going to go ahead and combine those together. And remember that um, if I have a y there, that means I have one y. That's its coefficient. So I can combine these. When I combine 7y minus 3y plus y, that becomes 7 minus 3 plus 1. And then I'll have the plus 8 minus 1. Remember that the uh, sign that's to the left of it tells you whether you're adding or subtracting. So now I can combine the coefficients. Again, like I said, 7 minus 3 plus 1 is 5. And then I'm going to combine the constants. Uh, 8 minus 1 is 7 to, for a simplest term of 5y plus 7. Go ahead and write that in your notes now. Okay, this one's for you, 9x plus 3y minus 2x plus 5. Go ahead and find your like terms and write this down in its uh, simplest form. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the how we do this. And I see x's and y's, and x's and y's do not combine together because x will be one value, y will be another, so they are not like terms. But I can go ahead and identify the like terms by kind of circling, putting some circles around there. So 9x is going to go with minus 2x. Then I'm going to have 3y by itself and 5 by itself. So the only things that I have in common through my little description description here is 9x minus 2x. So I can combine the coefficients. 9 minus 2 is 7. And then I have to just bring down the plus 3y plus 5. And that's as low as this uh, term can go. Who had that? 
To simplify an expression means that we have to do all the operations, in including the like terms. So now we're going to be taking a look at the distributive property to go ahead and combine our like terms. And in hands-on equations, we've seen the distributive property and how it works. Um, some of us might be at a point where we can go ahead and just use the distributive property. Some of us might have to think in different terms of like separating it out and then combining it back together. Um, for our purposes, uh, we're going to go ahead and use use the, the shortcut way, um, but if you have to, please do go ahead and write it out the long way. So put your pencils down. We're going to take a look at simplifying 6 times the quantity 5 plus n minus 2n. Right now, as I look at 6 times the quantity 5 plus n, I do see the distributive property there. It is a combination of multiplication and addition. And then I'm also going to be taking away 2n. So I have to take 6 times 5 plus n, and I have to simplify it. I have to get it to where I can read it easier. In hands-on equations, what we would do is we would take 5 plus n and represent that. Then we would look to the factor, and the factor is 6, and we would do that 6 times. So on paper, this could become quite lengthy, and you might make some mistakes. So what we're going to go ahead and do is use the distributive property to, uh, to simplify this. So I'm going to take 6 times 5, because if you think about writing 5 plus n 6 times over, that's what's going to happen, plus 6 times n, which means I would have 6 n's minus 2 n. When I look at this, I'm going to go ahead and multiply to kind of get uh, actual values. So I'll have 30 plus 6n minus 2n. Now I can combine my like terms. I see I have 6n minus 2n. So that would be like 6 pawns taking away 2 pawns. So when I do that, I can combine those coefficients. 6 minus 2 equals 4. My simplest terms would be 30 plus 4n. Go ahead and write that in your notes now. Okay, you have a problem uh, on your own. Three uh, c times the, or excuse me, three times the quantity c plus seven minus c. I'm going to go ahead and let you try that one out on your own. If you do have to write out the terms um, separately, you can go ahead and, or the expression separately, you can go ahead and do that. If not, try and use the distributive property to solve. Do that now. Okay, so when you get your um, when you get it set up, we're going to take 3 times c plus 3 times 7 because c plus 7 is our core. We'd repeat it three times. So we would see three c's and we would see uh, three sevens. And then we'd take away c. So when I simplify that, it becomes 3c plus 21 minus c. And the only uh, like terms that I have are the c's. So 3c minus c. And we only have one c there, which means you're doing 3 minus 1. So 2c plus 21 is in simplest form. Okay, for your next uh, activity, you are going to be doing a matching game with simplified expressions and um, expressions. So you're going to be taking an expression that's written out long ways, just like you've been doing, and you're going to simplify it to try and find its match. Uh, so you will have uh, this, all the sets of cards. You will need a piece of paper out to do the math, uh, and we will be collecting this at the end. You will be working with your shoulder partner. And you need to make sure that both of you are doing the work so that each one of you can get uh, the get some points for doing this activity. So again, please make sure that you do work together on this activity. You're finding um, expressions matched with their simplified expression, and you're writing it down on paper. For the closure, you're going to be doing a connect three. In a connect three, remember, we write um, a sentence on each line. And then in the center, we sum up our learning in three full sentences. So you're going to be connecting um, writing expressions with combining like terms. You're going to be connecting writing expressions with simplifying expressions. And then simplifying expressions with combining like terms. Go ahead and do that now.